Okay guys, here it is. Everything you'd ever want to know about the Conso 226 Industrial Walking Foot Sewing Machine. Let's jump right into it. Okay, well let's start out with some of the common differences between a 226 and some other similar walking foot sewing machines like a 206 RB. They have them um, models one through five is the current one. What are the differences? This is a Conso 226. The reverse is a big paddle lever that's really easy to reach and I've always kind of favored that. It may be because a Conso 226 was actually my first industrial sewing machine. So it's always just felt very natural to me. A Conso 226 is a top loading bobbin machine, whereas a 206 RB is actually a side loader. You put the bobbin in from the left side of the machine underneath, either that or you can just tip the machine back. So that's some of the main differences. Um, there are others. We've got a standard G size bobbin in the 226, whereas the 206 RB, all of those use a large industrial M style bobbin. The early 206 RB models, the reverse lever you actually lifted up. And if you're used to a reverse lever that pushes down, it's hard to get used to for the first few times operating a reverse that moves up. But like anything else, once you've sewn on it the last three times, you kind of get used to it. The Conso 226 is very similar to the Juki LU 563. The 563 is also a top loading bobbin, just very similar in their layout and design. The Conso 226 is comparable to a FAF 145, for instance, and I think it's quite capable of doing upholstery leather, vinyl, heavy canvas, and it's all because of the walking foot. A key feature to look for if you want to do leather or vinyl work, heavy upholstery fabrics, is a walking foot. Instead of just having a drop feed from underneath like a household sewing machine, you'll actually have a drop feed plus a walking foot. And it's just alternating presser feet that work together and smoothly pull the fabric forward in unison so that it you don't get any movement of your top layer that's different relative to your bottom layer. Everything is pulled together smoothly so you don't get wrinkles or puckers unnecessarily. The thing about the Conso 226 that's great is this is actually a triple feed walking foot machine. Watch the action of the needle. You'll notice that as the material is advancing, the needle is down. So the needle is down and the walking foot and the feed dogs are pulling the material through and that's a difference between some of these other walking foot sewing machines. They might be a walking foot but they're a double feed, they're not triple feed. And the way to tell is it's a double feed if the needle stays up while the material is being advanced. A triple feed the needle is down while the material is being advanced. So in essence you have not only just the feed dogs and the walking foot, but you also have the needle itself is helping to advance the layers of material in unison. Now is it a must have to have triple feed for upholstery work? No, I wouldn't consider it a must have, but it is kind of one of those premium features where the very best sewing machines, those older all steel machines that are made in Japan and Germany, just a lot of cast iron, solid, heavy duty machines. A lot of those were triple feed machines and I can tell you they're just a joy to sew on. Now this machine has a servo motor with a small motor pulley attached and what that does for us is it actually slows the machine right down. It's easier to control from a start and it makes it totally variable speed by having that servo motor. The small motor pulley actually improves mechanical advantage in some ways. It's kind of like going from a little single speed BMX to a 21 speed mountain bike. It just gives you more torque and it really helps you climb up over thick and bulky seams. So if you have the option to switch from a traditional fast clutch motor that hums all the time to a variable speed servo motor, especially if it's one with a small motor pulley, I really encourage you to make that swap. When reverse is activated, it's best if you can be at bottom dead center 
and then plus a little bit higher as the hand wheel rolls toward the operator. Depress the reverse lever and then you can make your reverse stitches. And if your machine is set right, those stitches will plunk right down into the same holes. Something very important if you're working with vinyl or leather. One thing that's always bothered me about talking about industrial sewing machines is the term balance, balance, balance tension. And I think it's kind of a misnomer and it confuses a lot of people that are just starting out with an industrial machine. Here's what I mean. Now you'll hear the term balance tension quite often. And I don't like that term. I think it's a misnomer. What it really should be is a balance stitch. When you look at the stitch top side, you want it to be clean, even, with no knots showing. And on the bottom, you want to have a consistent stitch with no loops underneath. So that's a balanced stitch in two layers of two to three ounce leather here in this case. So that looks pretty good. But why I don't like the term balance tension is because if we pull this material away from the machine and actually compare the tension of the upper and lower thread, it is anything but balanced. And remember this set, this machine is set up perfectly. So as I pull the bobbin thread, it's very light resistance. They say something like a spool of floss unwinding. Now for me, I want a little more tension than a spool of floss. It's probably double that for an industrial machine. But it's very light. It, it feeds evenly. There's not much resistance to that. It has to be smooth and even. That's all you need from your bobbin tension. On the upper tension, even with the foot raised, I can do it with a knee lift here or with the presser foot lift behind the machine, even with that raised, there is a good amount of tension on the upper thread. And so to me, calling it balanced tension is really confusing for new sewers. Some real basics of any industrial sewing machine. You always want to have the presser foot down when you start sewing and you always, always, always want to hold the threads back. Both the upper and the lower threads. Just hold them back until you make three or four stitches. If this is something that's going to be your final seam, go ahead and back tack it. And then you're off to the races. You can go ahead and stitch from there. But if you forget to hold those threads back when you first start to sew, that can be the entire and only cause of a rat's nest underneath the bobbin area. Bury your needle when you come to a corner, lift the presser foot, and away you go. Now with these variable speed servo motors, you can hum along pretty good if you want to. The speed is adjustable by a single knob on some units right on the motor and it's also completely variable speed from the pedal. You can go just about as slow as you want to or you can hum along at almost production speeds. If you have to hand wheel the machine, only turn it towards the operator. Turning it more than a quarter of a revolution in the backwards direction away from the operator can quickly cause a rat nest down by the bobbin area. Have you ever pulled your hair out and said, why won't my machine easily release the material when I'm done sewing? Well, when you're sewing along, there's a certain release point to the machine. And on the console 226, that's up to top dead center, and then continue to roll the hand wheel toward the operator until the needle goes down a bit more. That's your release point. From there, just lift the presser foot and the threads will easily release the material. While we don't have time to show you every oil point on the Conso 226, for that I'll have you pull the manual up online, learn those oil points and keep your machine lubricated, but I do want to take a second to talk about three commonly missed spots for lubrication on your 226. So the first of the three areas that people usually forget to oil is down around the bobbin case. Put a drop or two of oil right in that area, it'll really quiet your machine down and prevent any damage under the bobbin case. Go ahead and spin the machine after it's oiled and you're good to go. The second of the commonly missed points is not quite as critical. It's right on your bobbin winder. There's a little oil well here. Put a drop or two of oil right there. When you engage your bobbin winder, you'll be able to spin that around to lubricate the assembly. This third missed oiling point really boggles and befuddles me. I've talked with professional upholsterers with 30 years experience that had no idea this was an oil point on a Conso 226. Let me show it to you. 
we're looking at the top of the take up arm and right at the base of it there is a little oil well and you want to put a dot or two of oil right in there and just to lubricate that articulation of the take up arm on its shaft. One of the most poorly understood features of the 226 is how to set stitch length. It is a little bit different than some machines but it's certainly not hard to learn. Let's look at that. Okay so to adjust the stitch length on a 226 just depress this button here. There's two that are very similar. This one is for stitch length. This one adjusts your or resets your safety clutch. So it's not that one, it's this one here. So you want to depress that button as you roll the hand wheel towards the operator until it clicks in. And once you feel it click into position, it will turn the internal shaft so you can actually adjust stitch length. Roll the hand wheel further towards you for a longer stitch length or turn the hand wheel away from you for a shorter stitch length. Okay, we've adjusted it here for a maximum stitch length and we're hopping just like a grasshopper. Okay, again, press the button, roll the hand wheel towards you until it clicks in, turn it away from you. We'll go for, oh, 10 stitches per inch there. We'll try that. A much tighter stitch length now. All right, let's talk about bobbin sizes. These are just a few that are very common on industrial walking foot sewing machines. This is an A-style bobbin that you'll see on a Sailrite Ultrafeed walking foot machine. This is a standard size industrial G bobbin. This is what the Conso 226 uses. This happens to be a bobbin case for a G style bobbin. This is an M style or large industrial bobbin. This is a U style or extra large industrial bobbin. I use these on my Juki LU 563 walking foot. It's known as the double size bobbin because supposedly it carries twice the amount of thread as a standard G bobbin. What's a thread sock and why should I use one on my industrial sewing machine? So a thread sock is just something that goes around your industrial thread spool and you might wonder why in the world would you need to cover the thread spool on your industrial machine and it's a very real problem that I used to have uh, before I discovered these thread socks. Um, I initially heard about using uh, a lady's nylon over your thread to keep the th thread from spooling off and perhaps catching down under the thread stand here. And it's happened to me on a number of occasions when I was sewing very expensive leather cushions and it just stops you dead in your track because the thread is basically looped around the thread stand. And so one of these simple thread socks, you just cut a length of it, you put it over your thread Try to loop it down underneath so it covers the bottom of the spool and a little bit above the top too. And what that'll do is just prevent any loose loops from coming down under the thread stand and hanging you up or causing unnecessary machine problems. Okay, let's quickly see how to thread the 226 from top to bottom. From your industrial spool thread, go around this hook and down towards the top of the machine. Hit the guide post two times, once back to front and once right to left. Hit all three holes in this thread guide. You want to string it through kind of like a barber pole or a candy cane stripe. There are correct ways to only hit two of these, but uh, the absolute correct way, the way it's described in the manual, is to hit all three of those holes. Raise your presser foot at this time. Let the thread pass between the tension discs around this side of the controller. Hold your thread at an upper location and lift that thread until you hear it click. Okay, once you've clicked into position, when you pull up on the thread, it'll act on the controller spring. Okay, from there, just hit your guide on your way up towards the take up arm. Take up arm right to left. Come right back down through the thread guide that you've already gone up through. Another thread guide on the front of the machine fairly loose thread guide here that may or may not have a little piece of felt in there to guide the thread. Needle bar thread guide around the back and hook into the needle bar thread guide and then go ahead and thread the needle from left to right. Always thread from left to right on the 226. From there just go ahead and pass it through the hole and hold your threads back. You're ready to sew. All right, let's wind a bobbin on the 226. To wind a bobbin, take the thread from the thread spool through the same type of hook that you'll use to thread the machine and down to the bobbin winder. 
through the guide hole on the tension assembly and around the back between the tension discs. Check the fit of your bobbin on the spindle. If it doesn't quite go on all the way, you'll need to loosen it by pinching the two halves of this split shaft together. If it's not tight enough, you can just use the blade of a flat screwdriver to splay it a little bit more for some extra friction. From there, just take the thread that we just passed through the tension discs and pass this thread from inside to out through a hole in the bobbin. Just hang on to that thread loosely for a minute and engage the bobbin winder as you begin to wind. Now here's a critical part. You, you want to either have something to sew in the machine and go ahead and wind while you sew, or you simply want to unthread your machine. I'm going to pop the bobbin out and unthread the machine real quickly so I can go ahead and wind a bobbin without fear of tangles. And continue winding. Sight down over the top of the bobbin to make sure it's winding evenly. If it's not, there's an adjustment screw at the back by the tension discs that will help you even that out. There's an adjustment screw here at the back of the bobbin winder. Now what this does is it helps to make your bobbin wind evenly. If it's stacked off to one side, just make a slight adjustment and retest. Go ahead and tighten that screw down. Right in the center of that slot is usually a good place to start. If you feel like the bobbin winder is going to put too much thread onto your bobbin, this is the adjustment screw for that. Now, if I turn this screw clockwise, it'll bend this finger down and allow more thread to be left on the bobbin. Counterclockwise will loosen the finger and it'll leave less thread on the bobbin. So that's a simple adjustment with a flat blade screwdriver. Okay, so once you have a nicely wound bobbin, it needs to go in a certain way. As you spool thread from the bobbin, the bobbin will turn counterclockwise. That's the way you want to insert the bobbin into the 226. And basically, it's a very common thing with an industrial that when you put the bobbin in and you come through this little anti-backlash slot right here, okay, that's what steers the thread under the tension mechanism of the bobbin case, okay? So just pull it to the left of this little triangular tab right here, okay? And so once the thread is passed to the left side of that triangular tab, from that position, you're ready to rotate the hand wheel towards you and pull up the bobbin thread. And we'll just roll the upper hand wheel forward. Okay. And you'll see the loop brought up from underneath the machine and just pass an object through to pull your bobbin thread out. Close up your slide plate and you're all ready to sew. What needle system does the 226 take and how do you insert it correctly in the machine? Okay, let's change out a needle. It's this screw here, small slotted screw. Just loosen that up and you'll be able to drop the needle straight down. Now on industrials like this, there's no flat spot on the shank of the needle. So you have to insert the needle correctly, pointed the correct way. Now on the 226, the long groove needs to face the left and the scarf, the little notch at the bottom of the needle, needs to face the right. Okay? The scarf always goes towards the hook. Are there a lot of choices when it comes to industrial sewing needles? Yeah, I guess there are, but what I wish somebody would have told me when I was first getting started is what's a good basic combination to start with. I recommend using a 13517 in a size 20 if you intend to sew with 92 weight thread, also known as Tex 90. So a 13517 size 20 is a great place to start if you're using vinyl or cloth. Now, if you're going to be using leather, it will be called a 13516, the 16 just denoting that it's a leather point needle, and it's also available in a size 20. Pick a needle, depending on what you're doing, you'll be using a 13517 for vinyl or cloth, or a 13516 is just a leather point needle if you are working with leather. And so just get your needle oriented correctly so the scarf is facing the right of the machine and go ahead and loosely tighten that up. We are talking a two finger snug when you tighten up this screw for a sewing machine. Do not use your Gorilla Grip to tighten up this screw. It'll simply strip out. Worst case scenario, you'll damage the threads in your needle bar and you'll spend a day, day and a half replacing that part. Do not over tighten this screw. 
Here's a couple do's and don'ts on the Conso 226 and pointers to help you avoid those headaches when you're first starting out on an industrial machine. Industrial sewing machine do's and don'ts. Do always remember to turn the hand wheel only in a direction towards the operator. Don't ever turn the hand wheel more than a quarter spin away from the operator. Do remember the three most commonly neglected oiling points including the take up arm right around the bobbin case area and the bobbin winder. Do to press this button and turn the hand wheel towards the operator to adjust stitch length. Do not push this button in an attempt to adjust stitch length. Do look in this sight window on older models of 226's to observe the actual stitch length. Don't look through this sight window on R1 and R2 submodels of the 226 to find stitch length. It's actually inscribed right on the hand wheel. Do hold your threads back when you start to sew. Don't ever start sewing without material in the machine. Don't ever sew with your foot lifted. Of course it releases tension on the upper discs. It's a no-no. Do adjust your drive belt a little on the loose side. It'll lead to slower takeoffs and avoid jackrabbit starts. Do install a servo motor. Step one, buy a walking foot. Step two, install a servo. Do install a small 45 millimeter pulley on your servo motor. Well, I don't know if it was everything you'd ever want to know about a Conso 226 or industrial sewing machines, but hopefully we answered a few of your basic questions. Do leave me a note in the comments if there's something else you want to see a video on related to industrial sewing machines, especially walking foot machines. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.